Right, so welcome to this video on Anover Assumptions. This is another one of my SPSS tutorials. Every statistical analysis you run will have its own set of assumptions. And it's important that you know and work through these assumptions before you conduct your analysis. It will always take you a couple more minutes, but we'll make sure that the results of your analysis are valid. Checking these assumptions can be done in SPSS. So this video is going to run through and check the assumptions for an ANOVA. ANOVA is a parametric test of difference. So as with a t-test, they rely on the assumptions about the distribution of the dependent variable. There are four assumptions that I'm going to run through. The first one is normality. The distribution of the dependent variable should be normal. This can be tested on SPSS using tests such as the Shapiro Wilkes test of normality, looking at the skewness and ketosis of the distribution, and by looking at histograms and QQ plots. So I'll show you a data set and we'll, I'll show you how we check for normality. So you'll see here I've got my SPSS data set and I've got my dependent variable here, which is the total score on a test of well-being. And my independent variable or factor as it's referred to in an ANOVA is the subject studied, which is this variable here. As you'll see, I've got three groups labelled one, two and three. And if I click this button here, it'll toggle to the word that I've called them. So we've got psychology, maths and history. So to check for normality, it's quite simple. I just click analyze descriptive statistics and then explore then i transfer across my dependent variable which in this case is the total well-being score and click on plots and uncheck stem and leaf this is checked by default so if you click that it will uncheck it and check the histogram box there and also the normality plots with tests. And then if we click continue and OK, so the output file appears. And you'll see we get a number of tables in this output. Some will look familiar like descriptives and some may be less familiar. And so here we've got a descriptive table and it tells us the mean score of, of the variable things like that, standard deviations in there as well, variance, minimum, maximum and range. Um, where well, some of these tests may not look so familiar at the moment, but hopefully after watching this you'll be a little bit more familiar with what all of these tables mean. So the first table we'll look at is this one of descriptives. Um, you'll see here at the bottom we've got the skewness and the ketosis score. The skewness is here and this basically tells us how much our distribution leans to one side or another. So it kind of gives us an indication of how symmetrical our data is. The ketosis, um, this basically refers to kind of the tails of our data. So if you look at the histogram here, this histogram, these in the, in the kind of um, left and right side, this is what I mean by the tail of the data. So if you think back to a normal distribution curve and keep that in mind whilst we're looking at this graph, a high ketosis would indicate that we had heavy tails, which would kind of suggest to us that perhaps there were some outliers within the data. So by tails, I mean that we would have scores that would kind of sat right down this side and down this side of the graph. A low ketosis score indicates that we have what we call light tails and therefore few outliers in the distribution. So back to the table, the ketosis score for this data set here is minus 0.152, um, which is fine. We would be concerned if this number was greater than three. So that's, that's fine. Next, we can move on to the table underneath, which is the test of normality. Here you'll see FPSS ran two tests. The first is generally used for samples greater than 50. And the second one here, Shapiro-Wilkes test, is for those sampled under about 50 participants. If these p-values are significant, that it, then that means that the data is significantly different from normal. A non-significant result would indicate a normal distribution. So we're looking for a non-significant result here. Next up, we have QQ plots. That's 
this plot here. This compares the distribution of our data to a normal distribution. And what you want is the normal distribution is this line, and you want and these these dots here, this is the plot of our data that we've got. What we want is basically for our data plots to line up with this line here. Um, so anything that was non-linear would be a concern. The next assumption of an lambda is that there must be homogeneity of variance. This basically means that the variance or the distribution of the scores around the mean within each group is equal. This can be tested on SPSS as part of the ANOVA. I won't do this now, but this is done in the ANOVA video um, that's on this channel. You basically you select the option for the Levine's test for equal variances. The third assumption is that there must be independence of observations. Basically, this means is that you must have different participants in each of your groups. The final assumption um, is only relevant for repeated measures ANOVA. Um, so if you are not doing a repeated measures ANOVA, this doesn't apply. Um, but if it does, this is really, really quite important. This is serificity. So basically, to conduct an ANOVA, we want the variance of the differences between each pair of values to be equal. So what does that mean? Imagine you have measured the performance at three time intervals. So you've got participants completing a task and you're measuring their performance three times at three separate instances. To assume serificity, we would want there to be no difference in the overall variance of the scores between the test at time one and two, one and three, and two and three. So basically, we would want these values to be similar. Um, it's similar to the homogeneity of variances in a between subjects ANOVA. It's tested with Mulchley's test which is included in SPSS um, as part of the repeated measures ANOVA output. So when the, when the significance value is less than 0 0.05, so significant, if we have a significant result, then this assumption has been violated. So we want a non-significant result. The variances of the difference are not equal if it is significant. If the result is significant and you don't make any corrections, an ANOVA might not be the best test to use. Um, as it increases the risk of a type 1 error. So that's everything for the assumptions of an ANOVA um, with a little bit of a walkthrough of how to check for some of these things in SPSS. Those that I haven't shown you on this video are part of the ANOVA procedure anyway, so I will cover those in videos looking at those